speak, an English speaking French uh, bakery um, where they kind of taught her while she worked in the bakery. So it is very much a yeah. sink or swim yeah. thing. Yeah. What was the most intim was the language the biggest barrier for you or was it like the driving on the opposite side of the roads for Chris when he was in England? Like was what was no, some no, of the No, for me it was barriers? really the language. That was it? Really the language because uh, I had I'd been to London many times uh, as as a student as a um, high school student and uh, and so I was familiar with the Queen's English. Uh -huh. But uh, I love how it says Queen's English. It's like <laughs> yeah. proper, proper English. Well, no, I wouldn't say proper. I would say English, English, English. different, yeah, different English. spelling. Yeah, I'm England, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. they still different favor it with a U. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so that, that, yeah, that was really tough, really, really tough at the beginning. Uh, but now I mean, it's like uh, it's a long time ago. It was 30 years ago. I'm as old as the person you just mentioned, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I think one thing that's kind of crazy is, especially with what you did for a business and what yeah. you know, the book, even in English, but. Math is kind of universal, and Correct. coding is kind of the same way. So Correct. you had that niche going for you. Did you ever in your wildest dreams that you'd be CEO of Sony one day or creating <laughs> fucking no. GPS for cars? Like you took Yeah, yeah where was that path trajectory? Yeah, there? exactly. I apologize. I railroaded it. But. Uh, I, was, I, I mean, I've been extremely lucky, and that's the reason I, I came out with the book. Uh, because for the past 10 years, all my friends have been saying, You've been involved with so many new technologies. Write a fucking book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And COVID in France, we were in lockdown for almost a year, you know. And so I had a lot of time because my business is international. I work with Amazon. I work with Google. I work with Huawei. I work with many companies. But I couldn't travel anymore. So uh, I decided to write a book, uh, The Talking Dog and Immer Immersion in New Technologies, because I wanted to explain that when I moved to the U.S. in 89, uh, it was the first time. I mean, I remember having CompuServe uh, with diskettes, you know, those floppy disks. Yeah, three That's and a half. That's the Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah three and and, and, and it was the first time two computers would talk to each other. Modems were absolutely horrible. They were making a lot of noise. It was very slow. It was terrible. But at least, you know, you could share recipes. I remember on the CompuServe thing, you had recipes. And you could share recipes about, you know, food, about wine, about things. And I remember thinking, wow, this has a lot of potential. My friends were like, it's never going to take off. <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> that internet thing's never going to no. catch on. And then I worked so for the bank, and they asked me to set up their, the first email system for that bank called Da Vinci. And, uh, you know, at the bank, we used to have faxes all the time. And Paris will send faxes to the San Francisco branch saying this is what we need to do and everything. And then we stopped faxes and we used emails. And I remember going into the office in the morning and people would get so excited. Oh, we have an email from Paris. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> it's like it's we don't like have came faxes over by anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I got, uh, I got lucky because uh, I went back to the States to work for a, uh, a company in Palo Alto uh, uh, to do an IPO for them uh, because I knew the, the CEO from the days I was at the bank. And so he hired me in Palo Alto and uh, and then after that, uh, I didn't have to work anymore. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> believe me, that was a long time ago. I still worked a lot. <laughs> and then after that, Sony heard uh, from an, uh, an employee who had left that company and went to Sony, and they were looking for somebody to head up Europe for the GPS division. Um, so GPS was invented in Japan by Mr. Kuwata, uh, who uh, basically had invented the concept uh, for Sony. And so they asked me to launch the first GPS system uh, in Europe. And seriously, we lived in London at the time, and we had neighbors lining up to our house on the weekend saying, can we have a tour in the talking car? I mean, that was unbelievable because the car would say, just think, no cars talked before. And then suddenly you had a car saying, take the next right at the roundabout. Please take the second exit. And people would be like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, it's unbelievable. So that, and then after that, because I was extremely successful, Sony promoted me to be head of robotics and artificial intelligence, which my math background then came very handy. Uh, and so the first uh, robotic dog, which, which you can see on the, on the, um, on the book uh, cover, uh, it's called IBO, which stands for Artificial Intelligent Robot, A-I-B-O, uh, uh, which means companion in Japanese. And, that, uh, and so that, that was the first AI robot available for entertainment. So the dog... I remember this thing. You remember? Yeah. Well, it's still on sale. In the U.S., yeah. you, guys, you guys still have it. We don't have it anywhere else in the world. But it's still, still on sale in, uh, in, in, uh, in the U.S. Um, and so Wait, I was, why don't they sell them over there just because they're not, at, at, I guess, 
selling? I, Sony not, no one's stopped, buying them? Or is it nah, because of Sony profit? stopped selling. Europe was number one in terms of sales for many, many years. Uh, Japan was very close. And America was, was not very successful until uh, much later on. And so in 2005, Sony, when they were, the company was struggling, so they decided to stop the robotic division. And uh, so that's when I was promoted to another job uh, in Germany. And, uh, and then they restarted at CES in Las Vegas back in 2018. They, had, uh, they decided to restart just for the American market. Uh, but that robot is unbelievable. I still have three at home, and I'm, I'm a kid, so I still play with them all the time. They go around the room. They can tell where the charger is, so when they need their battery goes down, they, they know where to go to, to get charged, and then when they are charged, they come out. They talk to you. They dance for you. They take pictures for you. you just say, take a picture. They'll stop and take a picture of whatever he is in front at that time. Uh, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, you didn't know about these things? Uh, it's unbelievable. And they're great. Uh, they're look, really look, cool. Yeah, look for it. But he's also it. you're going to be you're one of those guys that we're going to look at in a you know fifty or sixty years when the robots have taken over and be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> he was the one that was just started faci- it, facilitating <laughs> yeah. all of this. So yeah, you may end up being like that guy that's blacklisted from Earth. You know, Will, like Smith we will, him, yeah. Will Smith will Smith will appear to say this. Yeah, <laughs> because of the zombie movie. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we live through our televisions. Uh, we are very much American. So, good. <laughs> but no, it seems like you've gotten, you know, not only is your brain, but your skill set has been able to take you all over the world. Yeah, I've been very, really lucky. Yeah. I mean, I, and that's why that's, I say it maybe 10 or 20 times in the book. I've been extremely lucky. I was always at the right place, the right time for the right project. You know, I mean, look, first internet, first email, uh, first GPS, first robotic uh, device. Uh, it's, it's, I've been extremely lucky, extremely lucky. And, uh, you need to update your Wikipedia. So for those that want to yeah. follow him on social media, <laughs> his name is Nicholas Babin, N-I-C-O-L-A-S space B-A-B-I-N. And we'll get his social media names and where we can find the talking dog, Immersions in New Technology. It's on his, Amazon. His yeah. book that's available on Amazon. It's got literally the same robotic dog that everyone knows and remembers, except for Chris. But, yeah, yeah, but I don't. So I cannot update my Wikipedia page. I, it you won't don't. Let you? You, you, you you cannot write about yourself on Wikipedia. So somebody. I'll do it. I'll do it after this. Please. We'll get high Great. and we'll do it. Okay. I have the edit tab <laughs> pulled up because I've been reading it. But yeah, it's missing some huge, you know, nuggets like your time in these other countries. Yeah, but you need to prove it on Wikipedia. So if you know at that time I didn't have a lot of press. I mean, you, you saw my Wikipedia page. I had like 50 or 60. Ref, uh, ref, yeah, references I mean, from like the press, but all this stuff was <laughs> not in the press because at the time. So that's why you, you know the person who wrote my Wikipedia page couldn't find all this information. Well, so, luckily we have this podcast now, yeah. <laughs> so everybody gets to hear it. And I may be off here, but you are. It sounds like it sounds like you had a big vision board. Is that was that your? Yeah, secret? that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I, I really. So to go back to your question, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the the Boulder world was uh, was fun, uh, but I was bored. Very honestly, I was bored. I didn't want to do like my family did. And, and it's funny because we're four kids, and my brother lives in New York, married to a Brazilian. Nice. And uh, he works for Bloomberg. Y'all like uh, foreign chicks. Huh? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the accents uh, that drive that's the everybody thing that crazy. Works. Uh, and he was the same as me. And, you know, I'm the oldest, so maybe he, you know, followed my, my path on this one. But he, he was like me. He said, you know, we want to see other things than Bordeaux. Obviously, now, I'm, you know, I'm 55. I live in Bordeaux, totally different world. I'm not in the rat race anymore. Um, and But, you know, for 20 years, being in all these countries was, was a lot of fun. So... So what are your what are your what did your family do in Bordeaux? So my dad my dad's a doctor, my okay. mom is a nurse, uh, but my whole family is about wine. And this chateau Omar Buzet uh, is is uh, is my godfather, who is the owner of that chateau. And so I have a lot of family in the wine business. Uh, and so that's why I was, uh, a, you know, I, I could have definitely done my whole career staying in Bordeaux and being in wine and tourism. Uh, but it, it was not me. But and you could have been a doctor as well. Like true. you are not only intelligent, but you at the same time, you know, like you could have done whatever your heart desired. You know, like yeah, my heart desired what, going to San Francisco. Yeah, you wanted to go to America. Yeah, and I married an American. You see? <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Small she was my boss actually at the BNP. So that I forgot to tell you that story. Yeah, she was my boss. Give us the deets on that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I liked her and I kept sending her flowers and chocolate and all this. And she was like, no, 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 no. We need to be professional. You know, she was like 23 or 24. That's not how we do it in France. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah nah. I had no idea it was not allowed. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm whoever I want. 
<laughs> and when you're French, you have that on American ladies. They're like, shit, this accent's sexy. You know, it's very little English. It's so cute, yet yeah, so sexy. Yeah, just yeah. don't call her a prick. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, we are. I was very careful. <laughs> And, and so we, uh, yeah, and we started dating, and then after that, I had to go back to France to do my military service because in France it, meant, it was mandatory. And uh, you she were in the military me. as well. Yeah, one year. Okay, so you have to serve at least one year yep. in the military. Right. What was your? Uh, so, like, as someone that did not know that this existed in, in France, I knew it happened in places it like used Korea to exist, and not America, anymore. Yeah. but Israel, I, Israel, Israel has one. Yeah. yeah, they still have their pretty much all life actually in Israel. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you you have to do like what two years of active. You have to do two years of active, and then after that you can be called anytime. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. They yeah. also live Reserve. in a part of the world where everyone around them hates them. So yeah, at yeah, some yeah, time yeah. they may be all hands on deck. Absolutely, so yeah. At the same time, you keep sh shooting all Makes your sense. neighbors, and I can see why they hate you. I don't know. The French are assholes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> to be honest, this is probably the nicest. Although when I was there, not I didn't have one asshole experience except for. Uh, when I did the touristy thing and did Arc de Triomphe or whatever. Oh, yeah, no, but that's Paris. It's not France. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the waitress there was like, get it's the like fuck New York. out of here, Mary. <laughs> yeah, it's Times Square, right? Exactly. Uh, and then I did Versailles, which played the more yeah. of the hits, yeah. you know. So, so, so with fun, you though. traveling, uh, you know, sweet. working in technology, doing all that, yeah. where was – what was one of the places, like, that you really just loved the most? Good question, Chris. Uh, it's, honestly, San Francisco is the best city I've ever lived in. Uh, it's my dream city. Uh, but the second one will be Berlin. Really? And then Tokyo, I would put in number three. I love Tokyo. I absolutely love Tokyo. But Berlin, we had two young kids. It's very safe. It feels like in America because very large avenues was rebuilt by the Americans anyway. So it really feels Berlin is, is a fantastic European city. Uh, but my favorite city of all uh, time is, is definitely San Francisco. I love that. See, love, yeah, cheers and, to America on that. Yeah, one. I didn't think you were going to say that. I thought yeah. he was going to go with like Monaco or somewhere. I don't know. That's fake. That's fake. And it's Monaco. crazy. I'm, I'm like, are you an F1 guy? Uh, yeah. Okay. Pull that. Yes. that I want to do. That, yes, that's a right. bucket <laughs> list. Is go watch that. Trip, yeah, yeah. Uh, that race. Pull that one. Yes. Yeah. It's, and I, at the same time, <laughs> Americans only know, you know, about smaller French communities and lifestyles through our television because not yeah. a lot of people get if you can get to France it's like a grand at minimum to fly there yeah, of course. and then that's just to get to Paris then you have to navigate the whole country but it's a it's a glorious place yes yeah, yeah. It's I'm, fun. I'm surprised that San Fran was number one I love that though Fuck yeah, yeah. It is. what's your thoughts on American wines I mean I, I absolutely love them and I've been again very lucky because my wife when I met her her parents lived in Napa so I was you know uh, getting close or getting to know uh, Napa and Sonoma wine very early on, and I was able to uh, to tell the difference between you know a French wine where you have a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and uh, Cabernet Franc or Petit Verdot, whatever, uh, and uh, and and your wine which is either a Merlot or a Cabernet or you know or or Zinfandel as we discussed before things like that, and and I thought it was very complementary, you know it depends on wine alone. Here we have cheese, we have. Uh, Charcuterie, as we call it in French. Charcuterie, yeah. <laughs> uh, they say uh, how yeah, they sorry. say things is just so much cooler. <laughs> and uh, and but I mean, drinking wine to drink wine, it's not part of the French culture. We really drink wine, so at least it's 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 part of uh, of an experience, part of of a meal, part of uh, a friend, you know, reunion, things like that. But you you never drink wine without food. Uh, and so that's why I really enjoyed uh, wine from the U.S. And I went to UCSB. Santa Barbara to learn about American wine. They have this program uh, where you can take for a semester and they teach you everything about wine. It was fantastic. And I, I really enjoy American wine. And uh, to be honest, I, I don't enjoy as much like Australian. And that's my personal taste. I'm not, you know, not uh, <laughs> doing any like, uh, false advertising or anything. But here, uh, Chile wine or, or Australian or New Zealand is, is not my taste and wine is made it needs to be personalized you know you need right. you know what you like and you know what you will enjoy the most and that that's why uh, for me French and Americans are really the two type of wines that I enjoy the most I mean uh, Germany has great wine as well by the way like yeah. white wine they have fantastic wine but it's not my taste not a big Riesling guy not be sorry Riesling no no nah. 
Not, not, not so much. much. I don't drink I a bet. lot of white wines, but I will <laughs> tell you that this summer we've seen a trend, at least in the States and in Colorado, where we have a little bit of a <clears> – <throat> we have the ability to have a selection, but at the same time we have a healthier, conscious group. So yeah.